Because you're old enough for AARP, Medicare, and Social Security, it does not mean you're old enough for dentures. Hi, this is April from Complete Health Dentistry, and I'm here today talking with Dr. Mike Rogers about senior health to celebrate National Senior Health Day on May 31st. Good morning, Dr. Rogers. Good morning, April. Dr. Rogers, many people think maturing means losing teeth, sort of a rite of passage. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's, it's not a rite of passage. Losing teeth is more an option than a rite of passage. Why do you say that? Well, the reason I say that is because it, it, it's an option on how well we take care of our teeth or how well we take care of our gums and what we do to prevent our teeth from being lost or damaged or, or needing to be removed. So a rite of passage, it, it really isn't. It's it's a an option we're choosing to either put the wrong things in our mouths that cause teeth to break down, use our teeth for things that we shouldn't be using them for, or just neglect. So just because we're over, say, 60, it's not something that um, is expected to no, get the dentures? No. You can you can have your teeth well to, to the end of your life. Teeth are designed to be here for our entire life. And so from the beginning to the end, our teeth should be with us. It's how well we take care of it and maintain them that really dictate how long our teeth stay with us. Along with that, yes, medical conditions can contribute to it, but we'll get into that a little further. So what's the big deal about losing teeth? Well, there's multiple things that it creates. Losing teeth decreases the ability to chew and in, in that same respect, then also decreases the ability for our bodies to digest the food that we eat because we're not grinding them or mashing them as well as we should be. So our digestion is affected by that. Interesting. It also creates a problem with speech and phonetics. If you've got missing teeth, say, in the front, it's going to have an impact on how you, you talk and say words if you have uh, sharp or broken teeth in the back it's gonna it may limit how you talk because of your teeth getting your tongue getting hurt or or pinched by it so I mean things like that it also increases the likelihood the more teeth you lose or the more discomfort you have with your teeth and mouth and gums the more the greater the likelihood of you needing to eat more processed foods uh, softer foods, things like that, which now can contribute to not only a snowball effect of our teeth deteriorating even more, but also can increase the likelihood of all other medical aspects, other medical problems uh, attributed to an in- uh, a softer food diet and uh, increased carbs, processed foods and sugars that are in those foods. Wow. So it's not just about losing teeth and and what it would look like. It goes much deeper than that, doesn't it? It sure does. It plays a part in everything. You know, uh, our mouth is the gateway to the rest of our body. If you've heard us before talk about this, I've uh, that's that's our stand on everything. It's the first first line of defense uh, for many pathogens that we breathe in and, and take into our body. And so we need to keep this healthy. And that keeps us healthy for a longer period of time. Well, what causes maturing adults to lose their teeth? Well, th- th- there's a few things that cause us to lose teeth. One, decay. You know, the, t- the teeth start to get cavities and break down or big fillings and crack and things like that. Gum disease, periodontal disease. Uh, the lack of knowledge on what we eat and how we eat and when we eat and, and also uh, how we take care of it our teeth and our gums and that's what we're going to go into today as well is just how do we take care of it how do we uh, keep us healthy and moving forward so how does periodontal or gum disease make us lose our teeth well the gums the bones in the gums that hold our teeth in is like the foundation of a house and if you've got a, a great foundation you can do 
whatever you want to that house. You can add a dormer. You could do this. You could do that. You can build onto it with no worries. If you've got a poor foundation, which is what gum disease does, is it causes our bone to deteriorate. Or it opens the, the, the vasculature in our gums or the blood vessels in our gums to uh, allow bacteria through. All of this degrades the bone and makes the foundation poor. Our teeth will start to loosen up and we'll lose them, along with increasing medical health problems. Wow, that's a great analogy. So if we've already lost teeth, what should be done at this point? Well, it, that's a great question. There is it, the, the thing to do would be seriously consider tooth replacement. Just because you take a tooth out and you can't see it because it's way in the back, don't just say, oh, it's way in the back, I can't see it. It's not, it, it, it doesn't matter. What happens is tooth replacement is going to be our best bet. And, and there's different ways to go into tooth replacement. We'll discuss that in a little bit. But, but even if you can't see it, you've got to take care of those teeth. You've got to replace those teeth because what happens is those back teeth are designed for cutting, for grinding. There, and if you start to take out those molars in the back that do all the grinding, now you start to require these teeth in the front that are m more designed for cutting or chopping things and uh, to do work of both cutting and chopping. Uh, my dad was a carpenter and as he'd always say, you know what, you can use a chisel for a screwdriver. But after once or twice, it ain't worth a darn for a screwdriver or a chisel. And that's what we're asking our front teeth to do when we take our back teeth out. We're asking our front teeth to do the grinding. Be, you know, no longer is it just going to be a chisel, but now it's doing all the work. And sooner or later, they're going to start to break down or start to loosen up. Then those teeth as well are going to start start to need to come out. So it's certainly not about looks. It's more about health and function. Health, function, and longevity. And what, what it is, is as our population matures and we live longer, we need to keep our mouth and our being able to chew tip-top and A1 so that we can keep ourselves healthy. Okay. Well, what are some, what are the options out there for tooth replacement? Are dentures the best replacement? Well, it, it, they can be, and there's there's no one right answer for what the best replacement is. It, it comes down to what works best in your lifestyle and how it's going to fit into what you want to do. Um, I mean, to, if you're losing one, if you lost one tooth, by all means, let's address that one tooth problem and not create a multiple tooth answer for a one tooth problem. Well, what do you mean by that? Meaning. Um, if you take a tooth out in the back, say a molar, and you need to replace that tooth, then seriously what you should consider is placing an implant in that place. Because now you've got that one tooth was removed, you're putting a tooth back in, and it's a one tooth answer for a one tooth problem. You're not uh, hooking it to other teeth that can twist or torque or get decay under. And... and so that if you have problems with those other teeth because of what you've done to them to replace that first tooth, now it's creating a mul multiple tooth uh, problem in the future. Okay, so implants would be your, your first suggestion. What else? Uh, there too, then going into other options would be, say, permanent bridge work, partial dentures, or full dentures in those instances. So in the beginning of our show, we talked about just because you're a... A senior doesn't mean that you need to have dentures. So uh, can we cover a little more? Why wouldn't you want dentures? Well, that's a great question. And one of the reasons you wouldn't want dentures is, one, if it's a partial denture replacing, say, a, f a bunch of teeth, but you've still got some natural teeth, we use hooks or clasps or clips that grab onto the other teeth. And what works great for hooks and clips and clasps, just like when you're fishing, you catch stuff. So food's going to get caught around these teeth. Food's going to get caught under the, den the partial denture. Food's going to sit there longer periods of time, creating a poorer foundation and once again, causing our foundation to deteriorate or break down. And so as that happens, the more food that sits there, the greater likelihood of decay around these anchor teeth. 
the greater likelihood of gum problems and bone problems around these teeth. So the teeth are going to ultimately be more susceptible to being lost in the future by hanging a partial onto other teeth. So that's that option. Taking all your teeth out, I've had patients come in and say, you know what, my teeth are, are, are broken and I just want dentures. We've got to eliminate that thought process because with a full denture, when you eat with natural teeth, you're only going to be able to eat about 10%. That's 10% of what you can fully chew with or chew. Be able so to eat you're now. saying not with not when you eat with natural teeth. You're saying when compared when you, to right compared to. So for example, you're only going to mush stuff. You're not going to really chew it. Now, yes, granted, there are people out there that say I can eat better with these dentures than I ate with my natural teeth, but that's few and far between. So, Doctor Rogers, um, if someone is missing most of their teeth and they can't afford to do implants to replace those teeth. You're saying a denture is not the best option. Is there something else they can do? You can actually do a combination of things. You can take uh, implants and place them underneath dentures. And now you've got a denture that's anchored and solid instead of just floating around on the, on, on the soft gums. Dr. Rogers, you mentioned implants as your first suggestion. Do you have to go into the city to like a specialist to have implants done? No, you don't have to go to the city to to have your teeth replaced with implants or to have dentures attached to implants or to do permanent bridges attached to implants. But what right here in my office, I do implants myself. I place implants in the upper arch, bottom arch, attach dentures to them. We can do implants where other other dentists may have said you can't place an implant because you're close to the sinus. We can do We've got techniques, or I've got techniques, that we can place implants in in limited bone spots. Okay. We're here this morning talking about senior care as it relates to dental health. When we come back, we will discuss um, how your medical conditions and medications can affect your oral health. Healthy teeth and gums for a lifetime? How important is it? At Complete Health Dentistry of Northeastern Pennsylvania, that is our focus. If your mouth isn't healthy, your body can be affected as well. Gum disease has been linked to heart attacks, strokes, and diabetes. And if your teeth and gums are in bad shape, it affects your ability to smile, eat, and live life to the fullest. You've worked hard. Isn't it time to take care of yourself? Turn to Dr. Michael Rogers at Complete Health Dentistry, where you and your health are our number one focus. Take time for your health. Call Complete Health Dentistry at 253-5000 and schedule your new patient experience today. See how we can help you feel and look better than you ever thought possible. Complete Health Dentistry. Visit us on the web at Complete Health Dentistry of NEPA.com. Welcome back. This is April from Complete Health Dentistry, and I'm here today with Dr. Mike Rogers. Dr. Rogers, as we get older, unfor- Not you. unfortunately, <laughs> with age comes medical issues, and with medical issues comes medications. So we have many patients that are on medications that affect their dental health. Can you tell us a little about that and why it is important to let your dentist know all the medications and medical conditions? Great question, April. The The reason we need to, one of the primary reasons we need to know about medications is because many medications can increase dry mouth, which is called xerostomia. And why is dry mouth a concern? Well, what happens, our saliva is part of our protective mechanism uh, it it flushes away bacteria it flushes away food debris it, it helps uh, decrease the acidity in our mouth so if we lose the saliva it increases the acidity in our mouth which increases decay it increases the food that's staying packed around our teeth which can increase decay and gum disease which leads to bone loss and other medical issues. And then it could just generally start to create more severe medical problems. Hmm. Well, what other or what medications are a concern then? Uh, There are many. Uh, Inhalers 
can dry your mouth out. So that's a, that's a concern. Uh, bone replacement medications such as Boniva and Fosamax is also a concern in dentistry uh, because they can create a condition if there's trauma to the bone or the gums uh, when you're having deep cleanings or extractions or any dental work it can create a condition known as uh, osteonecrosis, which is the bone actually starts to just die. Well, that sounds painful. Does, so does that mean that you can't have teeth extracted if you've been on Beneva or Fosamax? Uh, no, it doesn't mean that. There's, there's actually blood tests that we can do or have done to evaluate, to see where your level is of how your bone heals and how your bone deteriorates. And so we could do tests on that to make sure even if you've been on this medication or have taken it. And it could be years and years ago, 10, 15 years ago that you took this medication and it still stays in your bone so that years and years later, when you go to have a tooth taken out, now you've got this problem that comes up where the bone dies and it just keeps melting away, so to speak. Wow. So things like that that's why we need to tell our doctors or dentists hey i i was on that medication even though it was 10 years ago even if it was for a short period of time it is a major player in what can happen and keeping our teeth and our gums as healthy as possible are one of our best defenses for it what other medications Uh, anti-seizure medications can create problems Uh, bone thinners baby aspirin aspirin products can create problems steroids can create problems calcium channel blockers and uh, immune Im- immunosuppressant meds meaning if you had a, a, a organ transplant and you're on medications so your body doesn't reject it those can play a, a, a part and antihistamines pain medications um antidepressants uh, antacids all of these things can create a problem in our mouth that can affect how dentistry is done and how well you can maintain and keep your teeth and gums clean and healthy. Wow, I never realized that. So it's very important. I know that we have patients that ta- uh, they need to take antibiotics before they have dental treatment done. Why is that? Well, the philosophy before used to be that anybody with a, a, a joint replacement should be on an antibiotic before any dental work. But over a period of time, With research and studies, the ADA, the American Dental Association, and the American College of Orthopedic Surgeons have come out and said it's not necessary really for everybody to be on an antibiotic. But you do need to keep and maintain your dental infections to to prevent them from becoming a problem in the future. And so that was the thought. Our dental infections are bacteria calling bacteremia when bacteria gets into your bloodstream can lodge in a joint and create an issue. But that's not what really is occurring in most studies. We find that that doesn't happen. But there are some medical conditions that would require you to have uh, an antibiotic still to be... So before we, before we move on, doctor, um, I, I just want to go into, can you explain a little more with, um, so they need to take antibiotics before dental treatment if they had joint replacements, Correct. Yeah. Okay. Now, if I know I'm going in for a joint replacement and I have decay or infections, um, gum disease, do I wait till I have that surgery and get that all out of the way and go through all my physical therapy and wait till I'm uh, back up and running to take care of that? What is the, no, the uh, best? The best treatment. That's great. <laughs> the, the best treatment is to have all of that addressed beforehand, because if, if you mention to your surgeon, hey, my dentist says I've got gum disease or I've got all this dental infection, dental cavities and all of that, they're going to step back or they, and say, hey, have that addressed first, because it increases the risk of you having problems after the surgery. So you could go through the surgery fine, but then all this bacteria in your mouth and all this infection in your mouth going into your bloodstream, creating an, uh, a systemic bacteremia can uh, create or locate into that surgical site. And now you've got a secondary wound infection caused from somewhere else. 
So addressing it first is always the best before you go in and have this. Unless it's an emergency case, then you have to have it addressed. But uh, what you need to have your infections taken care of because it helps wound healing, it helps you healing, it helps you getting back up and running much quicker. So if you are in need of a joint replacement or organ replacement, um, it's very important to make sure that you get all of those infections taken care of beforehand because you can actually risk that joint replacement or organ failing, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. So um, you started about other med- or other medical conditions that require pre-medication. Other medical conditions that could require medications are uh, some autoimmune diseases that can create it. Cancer patients may need to be pre-medicated on chemotherapy, uh, chronic steroid use can meet pre-medication, and also uh, people with some heart, heart problems or heart ailments. So what kind of heart conditions? Uh, congenital, meaning conditions you're born with uh, that would uh, require you to have surgery early on in life, and, and then defects in your heart where, that haven't been corrected may need you to have a uh, pre-medication. The other things would be uh, if you had a, a, a heart defect fixed, but there's still a, a problem around that site, even years later, you should be premedicated with an antibiotic for that. So I know I've seen you a lot of times on the phone with cardiologists discussing things like this. So you would partner with the cardiologist and, and make a plan together? Yes. that's It's not only cardiologists anymore. It's, it's orthopedic surgeons. It's anybody having surgery beforehand because this systemic link of the bacteria in our mouth, meaning the bacteria is only one cell layer away from our bloodstream. And so if you've got a lot of bacteria in your mouth, it's going right into your bloodstream and it's always runs the risk of getting an infection in those surgical sites or where you're having surgery. And as I said, it's going to make it harder for you to heal. Wow. So letting your dentist know of any changes in your medical condition, medications, supplements, your overall health, and even your family history, um, they're all very important things to let your dentist know because, uh, as we just discussed, it affects your overall health and your oral health as well. Exactly. A whiter, brighter smile looks great on everyone. It not only improves your appearance, whiter teeth can make you look younger, healthier, and more vibrant. It sure complements a golden summer tan, too. And if you have a wedding in the near future, whitening your teeth should be in your plans. For the month of July, Complete Health Dentistry of Northeastern Pennsylvania is offering $100 off in-office whitening or $25 off our take-home whitening. Dr. Michael Rogers welcomes new patients and extends this whitening special to everyone. Call for an appointment today, 253-5000. It's a great way to boost your confidence. And with the special discount this month, now is the perfect time. Complete Health Dentistry, transforming your health for a lifetime. Visit us on the web at completehealthdentistryofnepa.com. Dr. Rogers, what are your top recommendations for our mature listeners to avoid dentures? Regardless of age, the thing to be doing is brush your teeth at least twice a day. Get in between your teeth with some type of uh, floss, uh, little interdental brushes, those little things that are pre-flossed or things. They make products uh, similar to toothpicks to get in between. But you need to get between your teeth. You need to clean that. Rinse and, and keep your teeth healthy with rinsing with uh, either an antibacterial or, or a fluoride itself. For people who are, have limited dexterity, say with arthritis or problems like that, they do make toothbrushes that have thicker handles that it, you can certainly use and it'll be easier to hold a toothbrush if, it, if that's part of the problem. The other thing are the, the newer electric toothbrushes are phenomenal and they do the work for you. So you get the electric toothbrush, the handle's a little thicker. So if you can't really hold on to a regular toothbrush and brush real well, these are other ways to keep your teeth and gums real healthy. Um, visit a dentist uh, on a regular basis. And How often would you say that is? Well, and that's different for everybody. The 
the, usually at least twice a year is what's recommended, but also you've got to take into account how healthy are your teeth, how healthy are your gums, what's your medical condition like. As we've been discussing today, there's a whole bunch of things that all go into it. So just twice a year may be great for some, but for others, you may need to come in more. And when we come to your office, what should we bring with us? Well, you should bring a list of all your medications. You should bring a, a, a history, your medical history as well, to give us an idea. And what I mean by that is medications you've taken a long time ago can affect you today for dental treatment that you're looking to do or that you need to have done. So once again, just because it's in the past doesn't necessarily mean it's gone and forgotten. All of this stuff is additive and it, it, it comes back to play. What about family history, medical history? Uh, family medical history can play a big part, you know, not only in what you've had, uh, but what could be a predisposing factors um, with medical issues uh, such as heart disease, stroke, diabetes, cancers, things like that, so that we could scrutinize or, or evaluate you more accurately. What else do you recommend? I know you, we talked earlier about uh, proper diet and um, if we have medic, certain medications that we watch to make sure we don't have dry mouth. And um, what if we have dry mouth? If, if you have dry mouth, you need to increase the amount of fluid, amount of water especially. Don't, don't be drinking sugary drinks because that just increases the medical uh, side of it, the, the increased likelihood of diabetes, other, other medical conditions. So it also increases the likelihood of um, uh, cavities and gum disease. As, as and if increasing our fluid intake doesn't combat the dry mouth, are there products out there that can be used? There are. There are salivary substitutes that we can use. There's also lozenges that we have in our office uh, that contain xylitol. And xylitol is a great adjunct. It's a sweetener, but yet what happens with sugar, bacteria in our mouth can actually eat the sugar and change the pH of our mouth and digest it. And that's what creates the cavities. What if we already have dentures? What are your recommendations for them to stay healthy? Well, you should take your dentures out every night, for one, just to let the tissues relax, just to, to, so that they're not irritated or inflamed by the denture. Even through the day, you should take them out uh, periodically to clean them so that food isn't caught up underneath them as well. Um, there, too, you should brush them and clean them every day because they can collect plaque and bacteria just like teeth can. The other thing is, when you, even though you've got no teeth, you should be seen by a dentist annually. One, to do an oral cancer check, make sure everything's sound and fine. And two, to have your dentures professionally cleaned because the bacteria can get into the denture pores and create medical problems there too, just like if they were getting in, in around your teeth. Okay. Any other recommendations? Uh, a good healthy diet is always proper limit limit as we talked about the amount of carbs the amount of processed foods the amount of sugars in our in our food and our drinks especially like sodas power drinks energy drinks all of those contain a high amount of sugar and that can uh, create all kinds of dental problems as well as medical problems and one of the biggies too is it's never too late to stop smoking how does smoking affect my oral health? One, it can dry out the tissues. Two, it decreases the nicotine, decreases the vascular, the blood vessels, makes them smaller, so you get a limited amount of blood supply. It can cause bone issues. It can cause uh, the gums to, to be uh, more problematic. The one thing we do see is people who smoke wind up not seeing some of the warning signs of gum disease, such as bleeding gums or inflamed gums because of that vascular change. And so they think, oh, my gums are healthy because I'm not bleeding, but it's a side effect of the cigarettes or the, the, the nicotine that it's limiting what your body is, the, the signs of what your body is actually doing. Thank you so much, Dr. Rogers. That was a lot of great information. We're out of time today. I know there's so much more that you wanted to cover. So um, I'm just asking our listeners to join us every Saturday morning from 8 to 8.30 to learn more about dental health as it relates to overall health. Thank you, Dr. Rogers. Thank you, April. Come visit us to take care of your complete health. 
Call us at 253-5000 and schedule your new patient experience today. Visit our website at completehealthdentistryofnepa.com for more information on this topic. Complete.